Soon a meeting was arranged. Amina and her Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Rasulullah Khatman Nabijin, delivered his last sermon, khutbah, on the 9th of Zulhaj, 10 years after Hijrat, migration from Makkah to Medina in the Urana Valley of Mount Arafat. His words were clear and concise and were directed to all humanity. Sermon Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam Rasulullah Khatman Nabijin said, O oh people, listen to what I say. I do not know whether I will ever meet you at this place after this year. Life and Property of the Muslims her parents encouraged the villagers to send their kids to school. Mr. Akbar promised them to teach their kids without any fee, any fee and the kids would also get books and stationery from school. Despite his promise, the number of students hardly increased. Uh, she will go the villagers to did not send uh, their daughters. Amina was the only girl in school. Sitting with uh, so many boys was awkward for her, but her parents were willing to do it for the sake of her education. One fine morning, Amina heard her parents talking about their landlord who has been bitten by a snake and admitted to hospital. Amina went to see him with her parents. The condition of the hospital was no better than the school. Medical staff was not available and the hospital was not even equipped with proper facilities. A wild boy was attending the landlord carelessly who was crying in pain. Amina rushed to him and removed his shoes. Then she took a handkerchief and tied the leg of landlord near the wound. She also told the wild boy to bring soap and water to wash the wound. Lastly, she covered the bite with a clean, dry dressing. Meanwhile, the doctor arrived and attended the patient. He examined the landlord carefully and told him that a little delay would have been dangerous for him. He asked Amina how and how had she had known what to do. She told him that she wanted to be a doctor and that she used to read books about medical and first aid methods. She had recently read the treatment of snake bite and followed the instructions of the landlord. Everyone was happy because her intelligence saved the life of the landlord and it happened because of her interest in, in reading. Mr. Akbar appreciated her efforts and the landlord promised to help find the school in the village, especially for girls. Equal opportunities can bring success into the country and development can only be achieved when everyone is treated equally. Importance of science and technology and to pay the zakat dues to the poor of your provision. Science and technology have facilitated us in many ways and made our life comfortable. Science and technology have become an extremely essential part in our life. Our day starts with the ticking of the alarm and ends with the switching of the lights. The whole day we use different tools and machines which help us in many ways. Scientists have brought a great change in the world with their modern and advanced inventions. 
Today, our work is done by different machines which can wash and press our clothes, prepare our meals, and do the dishes, etc. We enjoy a lux luxurious, luxurious lifestyle because of science and technology. Transportation has become easier and faster. Now we can quickly reach our destination within a few minutes or a few hours. Technology helps us to communicate with other people around the world. Various objects and devices have, like computers, mobile phones, laptops and electric media have made this world, this world a global village. Uh, we can work from home and earn benefits. Home businesses flourish and a lot of people are now working in the if you hold fast to it, you shall never go astray. The life of Hazrat Muhammad وسلم, is the best example to follow for all humankind. Bearing witness, Hazrat Muhammad definitely uh, to earn uh, their breads, bread and butter, uh, we can stay connected to with our friends and family globally. They responded. Technology has. said, and as you will be asked about me. What are you going to say? They replied, We bear witness that you have conveyed the message or, and fulfilled your mission. He وسلم, raised his full finger skywards and then moved it down towards people while saying, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bear witness. He said that that praise thrice. Let him that is present convey it to him who is absent, for to whom the message is conveyed may be having more understanding of it than the audience. Sahih Bukhari, Book 1, and um, Hadith 234, Sahih Muslim, Book 1, Hadith 397. Mount Hires of Pakistan Major Tufal Muhammad Major Tufal Muhammad was born on June 22nd, 1914 in Hushyarpur. He got a commission in the 16th Punjab Regiment in Also facilitated us in the field of education. Students are getting an education uh, sitting at home, uh, students are facilitated with smart classes, multimedia devices, e libraries, e books, etc. Lessons are taught on mobile phone or computers, and teachers are recording the lessons of our students' ease. During the pandemic of COVID-19, technology became a life savior for many people. The whole world was transformed into the smart world and everyone continued working from their homes and it was only possible due to modern technology. Various contributions in the Lakshmipur area. When Major Tufal, Major Tufal Muhammad, when Major Tufal Muhammad, the group was about 15 yards away from the enemy line, they came under heavy fire, but he kept moving forward and silenced the enemy machine gun with a grenade. Major Tufal Muhammad was fatally wounded, but crawled towards the enemy commander. Heading to attack his men, he continued directing the operation until the enemy was, enemy was driven out. In spite of being seriously injured, he continued to lead his troops in the heart of the battle. Enemy troops were successfully evicted and the area was captured. The Indians were driven out, leaving 
Paul dead and the three prisoners. He embraced martyrdom on 7th August 1958. He was awarded with the Nishani Heather for his distinguished action of valor and bravery. Rashid Minhas Shaheed Rashid Minhas was born on 17th February 1951. He was commissioned as a pilot in Pakistan Air Force in 1971. Rashid Minhas was the only PAF officer to receive the highest valor award, the Nishani Heather. He was also the youngest person and the shortest serving officer who received this award. Rashid Minhas got his early education from Karachi. At the age of 17, he joined the Pakistan Air Force, Air Force Academy in Risalpur as a flying cadet. Rashid Minhas graduated from the academy as a general um, duty pilot and was posted to PAF base Mansoor in Karachi. On August 20, 1971, as a pilot under training, Rashid was to take off on a routine training flight when his instructor pilot, Matipu Rahman, Matiyu Rahman, uh, forced his way into the rear cockpit. His instructor seized control of the aircraft and headed towards India. When Rashid Minhas realized that the absconding pilot was heading towards India, he tried to regain control of the plane, but was unable to do so. Rashid Minhas informed authorities through his radio at Masroor Control, at Masroor Control Tower, that he was being hijacked. The events that followed later proved a tale of great courage and patriotism. In year, Rachel Inhouse struggled physically to rest control, which continued for a few minutes. He did the only thing within his control to prevent the aircraft from being taken to India. Rachel Inhouse forced his plane to crash just 51 kilometers from the Indian border, deliberately sacrificing his life for the owner of Pakistan. The jet crashed near Tata. Rajan Minhas created a history of loyalty by sacrificing his life for his motherland. He was laid to rest on August 21, 1971 with full military honors his entire family attended the funeral. He was buried in Karachi. Rashid Minhas was posthumously awarded Pakistan's top military honor, the Nishani Heather. The nation remembered Rashid Minhas as a national hero with reverence due to his bravery and supreme sacrifice. Our nation's strength. What makes a nation's pillar high? What makes a nation's pillars high and its foundation strong? What makes its mighty to defy the force that rounded throng? The force that rounded throngs. It is not gold. Uh, it's a kingdom's grand. Go down in battle shock. Its shafts are laid on sinking sand, not on abiding rock. Is it the sword? Ask the red dust of empires passed away. The blood has turned to their stones to rust, their glory to decay. And is it pride, ah, that bright crown has seemed to nations sweet, but God has struck its lustre down in ashes at his feet.
not gold but only men can make a people great and strong men who for truth and honor's sake stand fast and suffer long brave men who work while others sleep who dare while others fly they build a nation's pillars deep and lift them to the sky what makes a nation's pillars high and its foundation strong what makes it mighty to defy the foe that round it throng it is not gold its kingdoms grand go down in battle shock its shafts are laid on sinking sand not on a biting rock is it the sword ask the red dust of empires passed away the blood has turned their stones to rust their glory to decay and is it pride ah that bright crown has seemed to nations sweet but god has struck its luster down in ashes at his feet not gold but only men can make a people great and strong men who for truth and honor's sake stand fast and suffer long brave men who work while others sleep who dare while others fly they build a nation's pillars deep and lift them to the sky qaidiyasam rahmatullah alai Muhammad Ali Jinnah Rahmatullah Lai, was born on December 25, 1876 in Karachi and was known as Qaitiyazam Rahmatullah Alai because of his far-sightedness and leadership qualities. His life was full of struggle, sacrifice and untiring efforts for getting a separate homeland, and for, uh, homeland for Muslims. In the early days of his politics, he was a uh, proponent of Hindu Muslim unity uh, he also played an important role in the Lucknow pact signed between the Congress and the Muslim League in 1916 views about Hindus and Muslims Qaidism Rahmatullah Lai was well aware of the concept behind the two nation theory and that the hindus and muslims were two separate nations he was aware they could not possibly live together jina described them as two separate entities qaidism rahmatullah lai said it is a dream that hindus and muslims can ever evolve as a common nationality and this misconception of one indian nation has gone far beyond limits and is the cause of all of our troubles it will lead india to destruction if we fail to resolve our problems hindus and muslims belong to two different religious philosophies social customs and traditions they cannot in intermarry they cannot intermarry and they belong to two different civilizations which are based mainly on conflicting ideas and conceptions march 23 1940 lahore efforts in the pakistan movement it was due to the untiring efforts of qaidism rahmatullah alai that the congress agreed to a separate electorate for the first time in 1916 after the lucknow pact when the nehru report spoiled all efforts of hindu muslim unity the nehru report was reg uh, was rejected by all shades of muslim muslim opinion the famous 14 points of qaidism rahmatullah alai were introduced in reaction to the nehru's report these 14 points presented by jana reflected the demands aspirations and sentiments of all muslims the congress did not give importance to these uh, points and became determined to oppose them the round table conferences were held in london from 1930 to 
1932, Jinnah played a vital role in the Federal Structure Subcommittee. Jinnah devoted himself to organize Muslims on a platform. He embarked upon a countrywide tours. He convinced the Muslims to resolve their differences and to create a common bond with the Muslim League. He made a successful League manifesto for the election scheduled in early 1937. The Muslim League won some 108 out of 485 Muslim seats in various legislatures. The election results proved that it was the only all Indian All India Muslim Party for Muslims. All India Party for Muslims. The Congress became the dominant party and made a government in seven out of eleven provinces. The Congress rule was only I only supporting Hindus. They treated the Muslims brutally. As a result of Kaithyasam Ramatullah's uh, ceaseless efforts, the Muslims are awakened from their unreflective state of inertia. They discovered that when they could live as a separate nation under the leadership of Kaithyasam Ramatullah. Demand for Pakistan the demand for Pakistan in 1940 had a tremendous impact on the nature and course of Indian politics. On the one hand, it shattered um, favor. It shattered. Um, it shattered forever the Hindu dream of a Hindu empire on on British exit from India. On the other hand, it started an era of Islamic renaissance and creativity. The Hindus and the British were equally hostile to the demands of Muslims for a separate homeland. It was the personality of Qaidiyazam Ramatullahi which gave the Muslims the great hope that the creation of Pakistan was inevitable. Smog. Assalamu alaikum, sir, and good morning. Wa alaikum assalam. Good morning today. Good morning. Today, I will not teach you a lesson from the book. Rather, we will talk on another important issue. Which issue, sir? The issue of smog. Sir, is it the only issue we face as regards the environment? No. The present day world is facing a lot of environmental problems. These include deforestation, overpopulation, water pollution, climate change, global warming, ozone layer, depletion and air pollution. Issues are many, but today I will talk to you about the smog covering our cities. Sir, uh, what does smog mean? Smog is a special type of air pollution. It, has first uh, it was first described over five decades, um, five decades ago as a mixture of smoke and fog, and hence the name smog. It is mainly a product of burning a large amount of high sulfur coal and vapors and smoke emitting from auto automobiles. Does smoke exist in Pakistan, sir? Pakistan is a country where air pollution is getting worse. With um, each passing year, Every winter, cities in upper and central parts of Pakistan bear a blanket of smoke or fog. The pollutants from the uh, surface add into the fog and thicken it to create the smoke as we see it. Sir, is the problem really intense? 
The problem has intensified during the past few seconds due to rapid and sustained industrialization and the addition of thousands of vehicles during December and January a smoke slows down everything and on some occasions brings life into a standstill. So which province of Pakistan faces smoke? Also state its impact on us. Punjab is the most affected out of all provinces. One can calculate the negative impact of the physical health of people and due to smog. Invisible particles penetrate every cell and organ in our bodies, uh, causing acute and chronic diseases, including asthma, strokes, heart attacks, and dementia. They can increase the risk of uh, respiratory diseases as well as lung cancer. Can smoke cause mental health problems? Yes, smoke can significantly influence the uh, mental health of our uh, population. The better the air quality, the better our mental health, while poor air quality results in poor mental health. Which is the most polluted city, sir? The provincial capital city Lahore has been called one of the most polluted cities in the world with hazardous levels of air quality. Once termed the city of gardens, the air quality of Lahore has been continuously falling into hazardous levels. The air quality index AQI of a certain area in Lahore was noted to be about 550 and it should be pointed out that air is safe to breathe is in only if air quality is up to 50. This therefore can be disastrous on citizens health. Sir, why is Lahore so polluted? Air pollution in Lahore is caused by a combination of vehicle and industrial emissions, smoke from bike, uh, from brick kilns, the burning of crops, residue, and general waste, and dust from construction sites. Other factors of air pollution in Lahore include large scale cutting of trees to build new roads and buildings. Uh, how can we safeguard ourselves from the detrimental effects of smog? I will uh, give you some tips on safeguard uh, to safeguard your family and yourself. Use a face mask. Number two, remove contact lenses and use regular reading glasses. Drink extra water. Number four, blow your, your nose regularly to clean out contaminants. Number five, wash hands, face and face and any exposed body part every time as you come indoors after being outside. Number six, avoid going out unnecessarily. Number seven, seal vents, windows, and other inlets of your house. Number eight, use air purifiers. Number nine, if there is heavy smog, drive carefully. Do not stop suddenly. Rather, pull to the pull to the side of the road if vision is impaired. Slow down when driving in smoke. Use fog lights. So, we learned a lot today. The information you gave us is very useful. Dear students, I will keep on giving information and uh, knowledge on uh, different issues. Thank you, teacher.
Pakistani female mountaineer. Pakistani female mountaineer. Samina Fayal Beg is the first Pakistani female mountaineer who created history by reaching the top of the second highest peak in the world, the 8,611-meter-high Tritu. She is the third Pakistani to climb mountain, Mount Everest. She is also the youngest Muslim woman to climb Everest at the age of 21. Mount Everest is the highest mountain in Nepal and its elevation is 8,848.64 meters. Samina was born in 19 September 1990 in Shimshal village in Hunsa, Gojar, Gilgit, Baltistan. Uh, she was trained in mountaineering uh, from the age of 15 and by her brother Mirza Ali. Samina Beg worked as a mountain guide and expedition leader in the Hindukush, the Himalayas, and the mountains of Karakaram. And she has been a professional climber since 2009. Climbing Mount Everest. In 2013, Samina became the first Pakistani to climb Mount Everest as she was joined by two Indian girls, Tashi and Nungshi, uh, Nungshi Malik, in climbing Mount Everest. In her interview with her brother before the ascent, Samina Beg started, stated that the expedition was a uh, Demonstration of gender equality. Samina's brother Mirza Ali, approximately 248 meters uh, short of the summit of Everest, uh, let his sister go to the summit. On her own, without his support, to present a message of empowerment to all the women of Pakistan. She was highly appreciated. Seven Summits Samina Beg enjoys the honor of having achieved more firsts in five years than most people do in a lifetime. She is the only Pakistani woman to have scaled seven summits in seven continents in just eight months. She has therefore had the great honor to hoist the Pakistan flag at seven summits. Mount Everest, Nepal, May 2013. Aconcagua, Argentina, the highest peak in South America, December 2013. Mount Vinson, Massif, and Antarctica, January 2014, Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, the highest peak in Africa, uh, February 2014, Mount Pankok Jaya, the highest peak in Indonesia, March 2014, Denali, North America, Alaska, June 2014, Mount Elbrus, the highest mountain in Russia, July 2014. Though Mount Everest may have been the highest peak, the most difficult to climb was the Denali the Peak, 6,194 kilometers in Alaska. We got caught in a sudden snowstorm despite the forecast being clear. We had no um, porters carrying our own gear and to set up camp ourselves. Unlike when one climbs the Everest, we were stuck in camp for five days with just three days of food supplies left. It was scary, said Samina. 
Samina Beg, um, high altitude mountaineer at the age of 32 years, wants to change the world. Her hometown, Shinshal, Gilgit, Baltistan, is one of the last villages bordering China with a population of less than 2,000, and she describes it as the most beautiful place on earth. Samina brought honor to her village when she climbed to Everest. Her achievement had a wonderful effect on youth. Since then, she has encouraged many more girls to take up climbing and other sports. She is a role model and has set a trend that others can emulate, said Aisha, Aisha Khan, head of Pakistan Mountain and Glacier Protection Organization. Incredible things are happening in Upper Hunza now, Samina Beg said. Unlike when I was growing up, girls are now playing football and cricket as well as undertaking skiing, rope climbing, mountain trekking, and biking. In the future, as uh, you will see many Samina Bakes from my village going into mountaineering, she added. In February 2018, recognizing Samina's achievement, the United Nations Development Program UNDP appointed her as its goodwill ambassador to Pakistan to help fight climate change, poverty, and inequality. Calories free meal. Multiple medical devices like x ray scan machines, operation and devices, and pacemakers, and exercise animal. equipment help doctors and patients to deal with diseases. The death ratio due to diseases has naturally decreased. Nowadays, online medical facilities have also changed the world. Online health tips, medical assistance and numerous health apps are the blessings of science and technology. Our planet has become overpopulated and scientists are discovering new planets for human survival. They have marked their presence on Mars and are trying to reach with a ram to sacrifice instead of his son. The commemoration of Adha, which is an Arabic word for sacrifice, takes place on the 10th of the Hajj. Mother said, How is Eid al Adha celebrated? asked Saliha. As Hazrat Ibrahim salam, was allowed to sacrifice a them instead of his son. Eid al Adha is traditionally celebrated with the symbolic sacrifice of a lamb, goat, cow, camel, or other animals. The meat of the sacrificial animals is divided into uh, the planets too. Science has also made us travel to space, Muslim and the world has touched the surface of the moon. Of Eid in a masjid or in an open environment. We are hopeful that soon there, there would be a new world of human existence. Undoubtedly, science and technology are blessings for us. occurs at the end of Ramadan. Ramadan is the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the first verse of the Holy Quran to Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah khatam al a poem by a soldier. Two months after Eid al Fitr, at the end of the annual. Who knew that the day of 14th of August will tell the world in the way that both East and West would come to know that in their stands? A country named Pakistan. This differentiates a lovely place with sacred lands and a home for a Muslim. A new beginning beyond a stream filled with the Muslim blood. Saved. And uh, what lesson do we get from this event? 
Who knew that the day of Putin's suffragists will tell the world in a way that both East and West would come to know that there stands a country named Pakistan, a lovely place with sacred lands and a home for a Muslim man. Our quiet efforts are poets a dream and a struggle of a human flood, a new beginning beyond the stream, filled with the Muslim blood. Good citizen, Shiza and Tanya were very responsible and obedient girls. They always followed what their parents and teachers taught them. That day they had a lesson about good citizenship. Their teacher told them that a good citizen had to imbibe including duty and responsibility. She told them that we must stay loyal and responsible to our society in nature. A good citizen must take care of his neighbors and fellow citizens. He must keep his neighbors clean. He must be vigilant in different situations. Shiza and Tanya decided to share in their society in their society's betterment and for this they decided to clean at their neighborhood and plant some trees. In the evening they went outside and started cleaning their street and garden. They planted new trees and removed the dead plants from pots and the ground. The wise old woman. After completing their work, Shiza and Tanya went inside their home to take a shower. Entering the door, Shiza noticed a stranger in the street. She went in, but her sixth sense made her curious. She silently stood in her balcony and started observing the stranger. He was roaming around in the street and then stood in front of her neighbor's house. She noticed that the stranger took out his mobile phone and dialed a number. He talked to someone and then stood outside as if waiting for someone. Suddenly, a motorbike entered the street with two more strangers. The street was quiet and there was no one from the area other than the three strangers. One of them entered the house by climbing up the wall. The, he opened the gate for his friends and let them enter the house. She saw felt afraid of their activity, but she bravely stood there to keep an eye on their next actions. While doing so and observing, she also called the police helpline and told them that she had what she had observed. She requested them to provide urgent help as her neighbors could be in danger. She had telephoned her neighbors to, quiet, to quietly lock the inner door to avoid any danger. She told them that the police had been informed and was on its way. Then one day, uh, the mother herself spoke of the Lord's decree and uh, dreaded decree. Then one day, the mother herself spoke of the Lord's dreaded decree. Well, my son, she said, the time has come for you to take me into the mountains. We must hurry before the Lord sends his soldiers for you. She did not seem buried at all that she had to go to the mountains to die. Forgive me, dear mother, for what I must do. The farmer said sadly, and the next morning he lifted his mother on his shoulders and uh, set off on the steep path towards the mountain. Up and up he climbed. 
until the trees clustered close and the path was gone. There was no longer even the sound of birds, and they heard only the soft wail of the wind in the trees. The sun walked slowly for the cloud not to bear, for he could not bear to think of leaving his old mother in the mountains. He climbed not wanting to stop and leave her behind. Soon he heard his mother breaking off small twigs from the trees that they passed. Mother, what are you doing? he asked. Do not worry, my son, she answered gently. I am just marking the way, so you will not get lost returning to the village. The son stopped. Even now she was thinking of me, he asked wonder wonderingly. The mother nodded. Of course, my son, she replied. You will always be in my thoughts. How could it be otherwise? At that, the young farmer I could bear it no longer. Mother, I cannot lead you in the mountains to die all alone, he said. We are going home, and no matter what the Lord does to punish me, I will never desert you again. So they waited until the sun had set, and a lone star crept into the silent sky. Then in the dark shadows of the night, the farmer carried his mother down the hill, and they returned quietly into their little house. The farmer dug a deep hole in the floor of his kitchen and made a small room where he could hide his mother. From that day, she spent all her time in the secret room and the farmer carried meals unto her there. The rest of the time, he was careful to work in the fields and act as, as though he lived alone. In this way, for almost Two years he kept his mother safely hidden, and no one in the village knew that she was there. Then one day there was a terrible commotion among the villagers, for Lord Higa of the town, beyond the hills, had threatened to attack the village and make it his own. Only one thing could spare you. Lord Higa announced, Bring me a box containing one thousand robes of ash, and I will spare your village. The clever young lord quickly gathered together all the wise men of his village, as you are men of wisdom, he said, surely. Uh, you can tell me how to meet Lord Hika's demands so our village can be spared. But the wise men shook their heads. It is impossible to make even one drove of ash. Sire, sir, they answered, how can we make one thousand? Fools, the Lord cried gently, what a good is your wisdom if you cannot help me now. He then posted a notice in the village, village square, offering a great reward of gold to any villager who could help him save their village. The young farmer saw the notice as well and wondered what would happen to his mother if a new lord, even more terrible than their own, came to rule over them. When his mother saw the troubled look on his face, she asked, Why do you look so worried, my son? The farmer told her of the impossible demand made by Lord Higa if the village was to be spared. But his mother did not seem troubled at all. Instead, she laughed softly and said, Why, that is not such an impossible why that is not such an impossible task all one has to do is soak ordinary soap in salt salt water 
and dry it well. When it is burned, it will hold its shape and uh, there is your rope of ash. Tell the villagers to hurry and find 1000 pieces of rope. The farmer shook his head in amazement. Mother, you are wonderfully wise, he said, and he rushed to tell the, the young lord what he must do. You are wiser than all the wise men of the village, the lord said when he heard the farmer's solution, and he rewarded him with many pieces of gold. The thousand ropes of hash were quickly made, and the village was spared. In a few days, however, there was another great commotion in the village as Lord Higa sent yet another threat. This time he sent a log, a log with a small hole that was curved and bent seven times through its length, and he demanded that a single piece of silk thread be threaded through the hole. If you cannot perform this task, the Lord threatened, I shall come to comfort your village. The young Lord hurried once more and took his, to his wise men, but they all shook their heads in bewilderment. A needle cannot bend its way through such curves, they moaned. Again, we are faced with an impossible demand. Again, you act as stupid fools, the Lord said, stamping his foot. Impatiently, he then posted a second notice in the village square, asking villagers for their help. Once more, the young farmer hurried with the new problem to his mother in her secret room. Why, that is not so difficult. His mother said, with a quick smile, put some sugar at uh, one end of the hole, then tie an end to a piece of silk, to a piece of silk thread, and put it in at the other end. Uh, he will weave his way in and out of the curves to get the sugar and he will make the silk thread with him. Once more the Lord commanded the young farmer and rewarded him with many pieces of gold. You are a brilliant man and you have saved our village again, he said gratefully. But the Lord's troubles were not over even then. For a few days later, Lord Higa sent another demand. This time you will undoubtedly fail, and then I shall make your village mine. He threatened, bring me a drum that makes sounds without being beaten. This time the wise men held their heads in their hands and moaned, it is hopeless. It is hopeless. This time Lord Higa will take us. The young farmer hurried home breathlessly. Mother, mother, I must solve another terrible problem or, or Lord Higa will conquer our village. And he quickly told his mother about the impossible drum. His mother, however, smiled and answered, Why, this is the easiest of them all. Make a drum with sides of paper and put a bumblebee inside. As it tries to escape, it will buzz and beat itself against the paper and you will have a drum that makes sounds of those being beaten. The young farmer was amazed at his mother's wisdom. You are far wiser than any of the wise men in the village, he said, and he hurried to tell the young lord how to meet Lord Higa's third demand. 
When the Lord heard the answer, and he was greatly impressed, surely a young man like you cannot be wiser than all my wise men, he said, tell me honestly, who has helped you solve all these difficult problems? The young farmer could not lie, my lord, he began slowly. For the past two years I have broken the law of the land. I have kept my aged mother hidden beneath the floor of my house, and it is she who solved each, each of our problems and saved the village from Lord Higa. I have been wrong, he said finally, and I must ask the forgiveness of your mother and of all my people. Never again will I demand that the old people of the village be sent to the mountains to die. Rather, they will be treated with, the, with their respect and honor they deserve and share with us the wisdom of their years. Think not all is over. Think not when the wailing winds of autumn drive the shivering leaves, uh, leaflets from the tree. Think not all is over. Spring returneth, birds and leaves and blossoms thou shalt see. Think not when the earth lies cold and sealed. And the very birds above her mow, above her moan, think not all is over, God still liveth. Songs and sunshine shall again return. Think not when thy heart is waste and dreary, when thy cherished hopes lie chill and sear. Think not all is over, God still liveth. He will wipe away thy every tear. Weeping for a night alone endureth. God at last shall bring a morning god in the frozen buds of every winter, sleep the blossoms of a future flower. Think not when the wailing winds of autumn drive the shivering leaflets upon the tree. Think not all is over, spring returneth, buds and leaves and blossoms thou shalt see. Think not when the earth lies cold and sealed, and the very birds above her mourn. Think not all is over, God does still love it, songs and sunshine shall again return. Think not when thy heart is waste and dreary. When thy cherished hopes lie chill and sear, think not all is over, God still loveth, He will wipe away thy every tear. Weeping for a night alone and dread, God at last shall bring a morning god in the frozen buds of every winter, sleep the blossoms of a future flower. The Young Boy's Adventure The Young Boy's Adventure I especially enjoyed being with my father, who, whom most people called Herschel as an English astronomer. Uh, he could turn every series at times, but most of the time he was light-hearted. He joked a lot and made me laugh. It always pleased him when he saw that his son was curious about things. He always wanted to learn about new things himself and would go out of his way to investigate them, although the Glen Plumbing. And Glen Plumbing Company grew into a successful business of which he was the owner. I think he recognized the limitations of his education. He wanted to gain me the curiosity and the sense of 
unbounded possibility that could all become from learning. I grew up being called a bird. This summer, I turned age. Dad took took me along to Cambridge one day when he went to check on a plumbing job. A plumbing job. Uh, it was the time of year when wildflowers bloomed on the roadsides and in the farm fields cattle grazed. He checked in on the job, and as we drove past a grass ridge, airport outside of town, he spotted a plane there and was stopped. Uh, we got out of the car to look. A man had an old open cockpit um, biplane, and he was taking people up. Um, we were learn leaning against the car and watching him. And my dad said, "You want to go up, but I almost died. Flying was a great adventure. Everybody knew about Charles." Limburg's crossing the Atlantic Ocean flight two years earlier. When Lindy came home, the papers had described all the events in the order in which they happened. Dad had read all about Lindy. What a glorious and inspiring story. Dad also wanted to fly over Cambridge City on his way to Columbus. Sooner after that, we were on a farm outside of town. When a silver plane flying west past high overhead, I'd always imagined it was him. I probably was scared at the idea of going up, but there wasn't any doubt about it. I wanted to do it. I thought it would be the greatest thing that could ever happen. Do you want to get on the plane? I said. I sure do, Dad replied. In fact, if you don't want to do it, I'm going anyway. So you better come unless you want to sit down here and watch. <coughs> We walked over to the plane. It was bigger than I had thought, um, with uh, two cockpits, one in front of the other. Dad handed the guy some money. He climbed into the cock into the back seat, and the pilot uh, helped me up after him. Dad was big, but the seat was wide enough for the two of us. And uh, one strap fit across a stool, across a boat. I could barely see out. The pilot caught in front and uh, revved the engine and revved the engine. He bounced, we bounced down the grass stri stripe, and then uh, we were up in the air. The plane banked and I could look straight down. We flew around Cambridge a couple of times. Dad kept trying to point things out to me, but I couldn't catch his words over the sound of the engine and the rushing gear. We turned back and landed. When I got out of the plane, I was elated. I couldn't get the view of the sky out of my mind, and the feeling of being suspended uh, without falling. Uh, we had gone so high, and everything on the ground looked so small, like the buildings and um, uh, trees in a toy train set. Toy train, toy train set, uh, you'd see in a store window. As we drove home. Dad asked me if I had liked the flight. I told him that I had. He said he had to. He said he wanted to see that flying was like ever since he'd been in France in World War One and had seen 
by friends dog fight dog fighting over the lines i realized later that it wasn't simply fun for him frank was progressive just the kind of thing and uh, he would have wanted to experience so he could uh, speak with authority about what it felt like and like and just as likely what it meant his eagerness to experiment was one of the most important lessons of my youth pakistani culture Culture consists of the way of life, language, ideas, beliefs, customs, codes, institutions, tools, techniques, works of art, ceremonies of a particular country. According to Allama Iqbal Rahmatullah Alay, culture encompasses all the mental, spiritual and physical activities of a nation. It includes the basic beliefs and faiths, values, and literature art and architecture music and mode of dress manners and customs prevalent in a given society pakistan is an ideological islamic state its very existence is due to islam so pakistani culture is primarily based on the islamic way of life all ingredients of our culture are inspired by islam for example muslims eat halal food pakistani culture is highlighted highlighted by its grandeur yet simplicity uh, firm convictions noble deeds and ideas if we study the cultures of pakistan and there are a few and different types of cultures so present at the provincial level they are different from each other in some respects and similar in some ways punjab punjabi people are very warm hearted very warm hearted and uh, fun loving they are a heterogeneous group comprising of different tribes clans communities and are known to celebrate each individual tradition of their culture punjabi is the provincial language of punjab the punjabi language is spoken as the first language by 44% of pakistanis urdu too is commonly spoken in this region dresses the customs of punjab are an indication of the bright and vibrant culture and lifestyle of the people punjab is well known for the use of fulkari embroidery in its costumes in most villages of punjab men wear pagri turban dhoti lacha a uh, silken lungi like dress lungi like dress and uh, kurta long shirt uh, kursas a kind of shoes women wear garara white leg white leg pants or churidar pajamas um pleated trousers a uh, colorful shalwar kameez kameezes um uh, prandas uh, ribbons worn in the hair and uh, choli dupattas a uh, short sleeved blouse scarf kursas and uh, kolapuri chapala chappals a uh, kolapuri chappals a kind of shoes or pille wale shoes in urban areas of punjab men and women follow the latest trends and fashion generally adopt different styles of shalwar kameezes and pants shirts cuisine most punjabi food is eaten with either rice or roti flat bread there are some dishes that are exclusive in to punjab such as parathas oily fat oily flat bread uh, makai ki roti maize bread sarson ka saag leafy vegetable and in cities chole 
Gram, Alim, and this prepare uh, with meat and pulses, biryani, rice, and other spicy dishes. In beverages, tea is consumed in all seasons and as a custom, most Pakistanis serve tea and soft drinks to their guests. Punjabis are also fond of zarda, sweet rice, gulab jamuns, a local sweet, kheer, a local dessert, jalebi, a local sweet, samosa pakore, spicy patties, etc. During summers, uh, people drink lassi, bay, uh, dood soda, milk with soda, alu bukhare, alu bukhare ka, sharbat, uh, plum drink, lemonade, etc. Sports Punjabi people have a major interest in sports and they are fond of uh, kabaddi and wrestling. Other games played in the Punjab region include uh, Gulli Danda, a game of Tip Cat, uh, Khu Khu Yasu, Panju, um, Pithu Garam, um, Barafani, uh, local children games, Ludo, Chupanj Pai, Hide and Seek, Kenche, Marbles. Some major sports include cricket, boxing, horse racing, polo, hockey, and football. Cultural festivals. There are numerous festivals which are celebrated by Punjabis, including some religious festivals such as Eid, Miladun Nabi, and Urs devotional fairs, which are held at the shrines of the Sufi saints. Melas and uh, Namaish. Exhibitions are also popular. Dance and music. Bangra folk dance is the most commonly known Punjabi music genre and dance style. Punjabis passionately love folk, folk songs and kawalis, Sufi music. Other forms of dance in Punjab are Luddi, Damal, Sammai, Sammi, Kikli. Gatka, Gidda, and Dandiya are local dances. And customs and rituals. Some of the customs followed in Punjab have no foundation in Islam. However, Punjabi weddings have adopted uh, those ceremonies and traditions like uh, Dolki, drum beating, Mayon, uh, Ubutan, Mendi. Obtain Mandi, uh, Bharat uh, from the Hindu marriage culture. Wedding in Pakistan generally lasts for three days, including henna uh, with songs and dance. Bharat, the girl's departure into her husband's home, and Valima, the girl's family, is welcomed by the boy's family. Literature. Punjab is very rich in literature. Sufi literature is very popular. Punjabi poetry is renowned for its deep meaning, beautiful and hopeful insight. Some famous poets of Punjab are Sultan Bahu Rahmatullah Lai, Mia Muhammad Baksh Rahmatullah Lai, Baba Farid Rahmatullah Lai, Shah Hussain Rahmatullah Lai, uh, Anwar Masood, etc. Uh, what is Shah Rahmatullah Lai? whose contribution to Punjabi literature is best known for his uh, seminal work, He Granja. He is known as the Shakespeare of Punjab. Bulle Shah Ramatullah Alay was a Punjabi Sufi poet, a humanist and a philosopher. Some popular folk tales of Punjab include Sasipunu, Sony Maival, etc., that have passed down to us and through generations. Balochistan Though Balochistan is an area of barren lands, deserts, and mountains, the uh, Baloch culture is full of traditions, arts, and crafts. 
Baluchi and poetry is one of the most popular crafts. Baluchistan is also known for its uh, tribes and festivals. Another district feature, distinct feature of Baluch culture is the storytelling tradition. Poets and storytellers are highly respected in their culture. People belonging to Baluch tribes speak the Baluch language. Dressing like all the other provinces of Pakistan, the national dress shalwar kameez are worn with distinct additions and modifications. Turban is the common headwear of Baluch men and a uh, white loose shalwar along with knee long shirts. Female dress consists of a shirt with a big pocket and embroidery with embedded round mirror work in front. A big dupatta chadar is taken to cover the head and shoulders. Festivals Both religious and social festivals are celebrated by Baloch people. The religious festivals are the same as across the country like Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. Baloch culture is full of many social festivals like the Sibbi festival, which has folk music performance, cultural dances, handicrafts, stalls, uh, cattle shows, and a number of other entertaining activities showing the colorful side of Lodz people. Music Lodz culture is rich in folk music, dances, and songs. Famous wedding songs of, of Lodz culture are Nazeng and Salong. The instruments used are mainly a flute, locally called Nal, and also Sambura and Soros. Food Men and women eat meals separately. Wheat, millet, and rice are part of the Baluch meals. Meat is also an important part. Saji is the most well known dish. Sports. Popular games include uh, like wrestling, horse racing, shooting, and hunting among the wealthier people of the tribes. Card games are also popular among groups. Sindh. Sindh is one of the four provinces in, pa in Pakistan located at the southern border. The the province of Sindh has been named after the famous river in Indus. The Sanskrit, the province, in Sanskrit, the province was dubbed Sindhu, meaning an ocean. Language and Literature Sindhi is an ancient and beautiful language, rich in folklore and poetry. The greatest poet in Sindhi is Shah Abdul Latif of Dit, known for his collection of poems, the Salo. Uh, he was followed by another poet, also a Sufi saint, Abdul Wahab Sachal Sarmast, who enriched the tradition of religious songs. Lifestyle People of Sindh are more inclined towards an agricultural based lifestyle. The fertile Indus plains uh, provide a valuable source of income for local people who practice farming on these lands. Inland fishing is also practiced along the uh, Indus River in Upper Sindh, providing a further opportunities for local people. And Itinerant, an itinerant lifestyle is commonly seen in the um, desertic, desertic regions of Hull. Palo machi, palo machi fish, um, pali, uh, leafy green, bee, uh, lotus root, pulka, wheat based flatbread, and rice accompanied by two dishes, one gravy and one dry with curd or pickle are the traditional dishes of Sindhi people.
Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Most Pashtun are sedentary farm farmers and combing cultivation, combining cultivation with animal husbandry. Uh, some are migratory herders and the car and the caravaners. Many Pashtun serve in the military. Uh, smaller numbers hold uh, political posts. There were 25 million Pashtun in Pakistan in the early 21st century. They comprise of about 60 tribes of varying size and importance, each of which occupies a particular territory. In Pakistan, the Pashtun predominate north of Quetta between the Suleiman Range and the Indus River. Food. Some of the most famous dishes include tikka, slice of meat, sudika halwa, simolina pudding, and kava, green or black tea, chapali kebab, a type of kebab of oval shape, kabuli pulao, dish of rice and meat, special long nuns long flat bread, and many more. Poetry Patans are very famous for their poetry, and they are very passionate and uh, patriotic, which is obvious from their poetry. Some of the famous poets include Amir Khroor Srui, Kushal Khan Patek, Rahman Baba, and many others. Clothing Return uh, Pashtun men usually appear Parthung, uh, Parthug, uh, Kurte in um, Pashto, Salwar Kameez in Urdu, uh, uh, with a Pakul Pashtun hat. In the Kandar region, a young men usually appear different types of hats similar to a Topi cap. And in the Peshawar region, and they wear white poofies, um, rimless caps uh, instead. Uh, leaders or uh, tribal chiefs sometimes wear a, a karakul hat, like uh, Hamid Karzai. Hamid Karzai. Women and girls have your traditional long dresses with a light piece of cloth used to cover their hair. They also wear beautiful handmade jewelry and beautiful frocks. Sports Some Pashtuns participate in um, Buzkashi, um, which was a sport introduced in the region during the Mughal era. The word buzz means goat and kushkasha means dragging or pulling. Not a team sport, it is every man for himself and that becomes apparent as soon as the game starts. Although um, buzzkashi is primarily an individual sport, alliances are built up between various players between the alliances, the uh, strongest players finally take control. This is very similar to polo. Uh, football and the cricket are other sports played by patrons of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Role of the media Media is known as the fourth pillar of democracy. It plays an important role in shaping public opinion. Media is considered as the mirror of modern society. Today, in this ultra modern, ultra modern world, the role of media has increased immensely. Print media has created awareness among people regarding their rights and duties. Uh, we can update ourselves um, just by going through the uh, morning newspaper, getting all kinds of news from all over the world.
Newspapers are the best way of educating people politically and socially. The public read about current, uh, current events, interpret them, and learn to intelligently uh, participate in the uh, political, social, and economic affairs of the country. Newspapers also reflect public opinion formed through letters to the editors, which are usually um, published on a separate page. Moreover, print media provides a great incentive to business through a larger number of advertisements on a variety of issues, such as houses on sale, shops, electronics, electronic goods, stationery, stores, uh, glassware, uh, crockery shops, etc. Matrimonial advertisements, job opportunities, obituaries are also advertised through the print media as well. Nowadays, electronic media has emerged as a very popular means of social interaction and uh, propagation along with print media. The birth of electronic media took place with the invention of the radio. It further spread through television, laptops, um, computers, or via internet, and now it is in every hand in the form of mobile phones. Electronic media has a very powerful and motivating effect on society. The various news channels I keep citizens updated. Quite a number of kids' channels have come up to cater to children. Social media as a computer-based technology originated as a way to interact with friends and family, but was later adopted by businesses who wanted to take advantage of this popular and new communication method to reach out to customers. Social media networks like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram are brought a revolution have brought revolution in terms of information and knowledge. Even governments and politicians utilize social media to engage with constituents and voters. Some people use social media applications for career opportunities and sharing their thoughts, feelings, insights and emotions. It gives us the ability to discover what is happening in the real world. These days, the internet is gaining a huge momentum in terms of its role in media. There are many social media channels running through the internet which have increased the level of democratic awareness of people of all age groups. This is a dark side into media too. There is a dark side into media too. Sometimes they lower the moral tone and publish substandard material to increase their uh, readership and ratings. At times, the newspapers try to ally themselves to a particular ideology or a party instead of maintaining their impartiality and indulge in mudslide, mudslinging or even communal propaganda and these uh, thoughtless means means for easy money provides a temporary financial benefits to a handful of people but to prove extremely disastrous in the end of our society at large. It is the responsibility of those working in media to use this platform carefully and wisely. If the uh, broadcaster doesn't look closely at what they are airing on TV or social media, it could have a bad influence on children and teenagers. In short, media should be aimed for 
uh, human improvement, it should respect the privacy of others and avoid sharing personal information that may be harmful. In this way, media may bring about a great revolution in every field of life.